southeastern Minnesota in a small township called Canyon on the shores of a beautiful little lake. I spent my childhood summers in this area and recently relocated here from the Twin Cities at the start of the pandemic. The forests are filled with black spruce, soaring red pine, balsam fir, clusters of birch, and velvety swaths of tamarack. The air here even smells green. I am conditioned for extreme weather, extreme cold, extreme amounts of snow. And while things up north here are still extreme, it feels different now. There's a weird edge to each season that feels unfamiliar. Lakes freeze later and thaw earlier. Birds fly back sooner. Instead of steady rainfall in the spring and summer, we are seeing fewer, more devastating storms with intense rainfall. I sent my small son outside to shut the chicken coop as a storm rolled in. Just as he closed the door to the coop, hail the size of tangerines pelted down. The wind was like a god blowing everything sideways. Giant red pines bowed down and snapped in the middle like matchsticks. It only took a few minutes. The consensus from our neighbors was the same. They'd never seen anything like this. A familiar sentiment these days. As majestic as the forests here still are, I've noticed that they've changed. Up north, acres upon acres of birch and balsam fir are dying rapidly. Invasive beetles are getting too cozy. The winter's no longer cold enough to kill them off. After all the harm we have done, I have a hard time being optimistic. I feel responsible and sad and anxious for the future. It doesn't seem our leaders care that we are killing the very planet that sustains us. What could be more important than saving it? Here, up in northern Minnesota, there are things we can do. As the climate becomes less suitable for black spruce, birch, and tamarack, local forestry experts are urging private landowners to plant eastern white pine, bur oak, and maple. Trees better suited for warmer weather. I don't like the idea of changing the forests, of disrupting what is natural. But deep down, I know it must be done. The luxury of time is no longer a thing. And so, that is what we will do. We will roll up our sleeves and clean up our own mess. We will take our chainsaw back into the woods and cut up the dead, split it, turn what was once a towering giant into small bundles of firewood, and use it to warm our cabin this winter.
have pleasure. That we would have pleasure. can hear people walking outside. You can hear their footsteps outside. Nowadays, it doesn't get that hard anymore where you can hear people walking past. The snow doesn't get that hard dry anymore, like it used to.
back when I was young. We have always had north wind all the time. from Bolton, Massachusetts. My name is Justin Albino, and I'm from Plum Island, Massachusetts. Every year on Christmas Eve, my family used to go cross-country skiing. It's a tradition that my father grew up with in Norway and that he's continued with my family. I've lived here for six years, and the changes that I've seen so far have, have really been exponential. But this year was the first year that we've actually been able to go in the last five or so years. And that's really just because of like the changing weather patterns. We just don't have the snow in December anymore. lost to the ocean due to erosion in the sands uh, on the coast and the cliffside. For living on an island, three may not seem like a high number. After talking to my great aunt and uncle who have lived in the area for around 50 years, they say that this number is unprecedented. These are the changes that I see in my life, and while they seem pretty small, it is disheartening to see these in my own lifetime, and it makes me really worried for the future. Some of my most vivid memories of living on the island come at the turning point of winter and spring, where there are dozens of construction trucks carrying tons and tons of sand to the beach to try to mitigate the destruction that the rising sea levels have caused. I am part of a generation where a lot of my friends don't want to have children because they don't want to raise them in a world that is so uncertain. in August. I really don't want those things to change. That's part of what motivates me to do something about climate change. To save these things that I care about in my life, but also raise my own children in a world that has a little bit more certainty about where we can live and who will be around. Yes. Yeah. 
our fortunes. I really hope that Plum Island will still be a location that people and animals enjoy together. A lot of the solutions that I see come at the local level and ways that I can get involved in my own community to try to mitigate some of these effects. My name is Laura Gill. Laura Gill. I am originally from Stanford, California. Stanford, Stanford, California. Grew up in the Bay Area. My name is Gibshan Shahin. I'm from Turkey. In my hometown. My hometown. My grandparents, my grandparents are farmers.
My name is Clifford Paul. Clifford Paul. I'm from the Mi'kmaq district of Unamagi. Unamagi. Which is one of seven traditional districts one of seven traditional districts of the uh, Mi'kmaq Nation. Rosalie Zeruda. Living in, in the Philippines and different islands. Has given me a lot of awareness of environment. the changing colors of the sky. The different colors of the sea. And I love water so much. predictable the climate and the weather in Stanford we would always predict that the day after Halloween would be the first rain years we don't see that normal cycle anymore I can see those changes very clearly um, anytime I go and visit home
what strikes me about the place that I live, it's on the edge. On the edge of things. So when I think about climate change, I think about it pushing things closer to the edge. Closer to the edge. Closer to the edge. of climate change. I went to my hometown and I discussed with the other farmers. They told me it has been nine months. It has been nine months. that it doesn't rain. That it doesn't rain. We've seen and witnessed and survived dramatic changes in the climate. I look at change. and flux and motion. Constant flux and motion. How we have evolved with that constant flux and motion. How the earth has evolved over that constant flux and motion. climate change. And I think we can really feel it in our daily lives now. One of the things that really I notice is the weather has really been very, very unpredictable. And it has been very difficult for us to even prepare. In like in an hour rain, you know, parts of the city is flooded. So the first people are going to be affected if there's going to be the rise in sea level is going to be us.
because of what I know, sometimes it can feel a little overwhelming. that we share the, the earth with. We have the wisdom of the ancient traditions. accelerate climate change, we also have to accelerate our thinking. Being able to think that we are one, that we are conscious, that whatever we do affects the whole world.